It's 0230. You know what that means. <laughs> We're pouring concrete today. All right, so here we are at the job site. Uh, we got it almost all poured out. We got about five more yards to go. That kicker is on the way. The pump is all folded up. He's ready to go. So he just needs to finish cleaning out. This slab is uh, 1,800 square feet. It's a 30 by 60. We got it almost all poured out. We got the main slab poured and we got started on the uh, cardboard area. But the pump, we no longer need it. So we'll be able just to uh, tailgate the rest. As you guys know, because we have bump cutters, because we have floating pans, we do all that. You guys know I like tools, <laughs> but not only do I like tools, I like tools that give me good results. Today I'm testing a roller tamper. I know I talked about it in one of the other videos that we did, and uh, I want to test it, see how it does. This is a Marshalltown uh, four foot roller tamper. So we've been using a jitterbug forever. But I want to try this roller out. I think if it works, it's going to really help us a lot uh, manpower wise because, you know, running a jitterbug, running a jitterbug is actually really hard work. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it, but that jitterbug gets heavy. And I mean, you have to drive that thing up and down. But see, the one thing that I've always had issues with with the jitterbug is the fact that, you, you know, you have, you know, you have like a six by 48 square rectangle pretty much and you keep driving the thing down now if you don't keep it perfectly level you can put you know almost like chatter marks in the concrete so that's one thing that i've always not liked about the jitterbug this roller should not do any of that and of course just like concrete it's all about timing so if we time it just right we shouldn't have a problem with it at all so we're going to start testing it today and I don't know, I have a feeling I'm gonna like it. Uh, what I did is I, uh, this is what it looks like. I have a spare one. Uh, this hole right here, this bolt right here is right, it's right here on that one. And here I just put one of those uh, quick connect clips and then I was able to attach the, uh, the handle to that. So as you can see, this roller tamper works really good and it's a lot faster than the jitterbug. So I think we're really gonna like this toy, I mean a uh, tool. <laughs> so it looks like it does a really good job. But the fact that it's much faster than a jitterbug, that's a selling point for me for sure. And look how close it can get to the edge. This thing's really sweet. So another thing that I really like about the roller tamper is it doesn't push the aggregate down as far as the jitterbug. You don't want that aggregate all the way down on the bottom because obviously the aggregate is the hardest part of your concrete. So you want it pretty close to the surface. Obviously you don't want it right on the surface because you want some cream to work with. Obviously this thing does a much better job than the jitterbug. You're actually flattening the concrete as you're using it. Uh, the jitterbug, you're actually making the concrete unflat. So, anything we can do to uh, make the process faster, easier, and flatter uh, is, is a plus for me. And, and this, this roller tamper really is doing a nice job. So, obviously, you want to clean it right after you use it. You don't want any concrete to build up on it. So the concrete looks pretty wet, I know it does, but we didn't add any water. <laughs> That's how it showed up. You can see right here, uh, come on, right there. Water added on job zero. Today we are pouring 3,500 regular, uh, not straight sec. This is a metal building. Typically I like straight sec on uh, barn aluminiums. The fly ash gives us a little bit more working time, so, you know, it slows everything down and it's actually a good thing, okay? Now, I do, like I said, I do like the straight sack because it has more cement on the 3000, but the 3500 already has more cement, so then you can add the fly ash and then you still have good cement content or amount, plus you still have the fly ash, which is going to slow everything down some, so uh, overall I think it's a pretty good compromise. 
Um, I don't know if it's a compromise, but um, anyway, that's what we're doing today. And like I said, we didn't add any water. It just showed up a little wet, but anyway, not a problem. We'll wait it out, and it's still early. It's uh, 0800 right now. So. not want to fall behind the concrete. We are pouring 3,500 PSI today, so we need to keep moving. Otherwise, if we fall behind, it's not a good thing, especially because today's going to be close to 100 degrees. That's why we started at 5 a.m. All right, so as you can see, he's done with the combination blades. He gave it two passes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the other trial machine, which has the poly blades on it, and put it on that slab. And then we're going to transfer that trial machine that he's using. We're going to put the pan back on it. And we're going to pan this lab right here. So we're almost done. It is uh, almost 1100. I figure we'll be done by noon. But maybe 1, 1 p.m. or 1300. We should be out of here. All right. So now we put that trial machine on the uh, carport with a pan. And we're about to hit the other slab with the poly blades. We got her done. The uh, carport is broom finished. Everything else is uh, slicked off. As you can see, we have a sprinkler on there because it's hot. It's over 90 degrees right now. And this is what you want to do. You want to water cure your slab, especially if you're here in Texas and it's super hot and super dry because concrete needs water to cure. So we asked the customer to put a sprinkler on there, but he needs to do this for about seven days for best results. He doesn't have to, but the longer the better. Uh, you notice we also left the forms on. Leaving the forms on is another way of uh, post-concrete curing. It keeps the concrete from drying out too fast. Anything that you can do to keep the concrete from drying out too fast is, is a good idea. So if you notice, now that there's water on the slab, there are no puddles. It's just evenly across the slab. This is what you get when you use a bump cutter and float pans. If you ask me, this is what all slabs should look like. That's all I got for today. I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, like I said, I'm going to do a lot more with that roller tamper because I really liked it. Uh, today, we didn't, we didn't do much of it. We only did the carport, but I really was impressed with the, with the results. But this is just a, a small preview of the tamper. But trust me, we're going to use it a lot more and I will do a full review on it. We are. Texas Barnuminiums.